All right, how's it going, everybody? Here we are in Ashland, Oregon, at the where, where, what venue is this called? The Armory. Yeah. We're at the Armory, um, and so I wanted to do a, a rig rundown. I know it's been a long time coming. Basically, I uh, I've been waiting for the moment when I feel like the rig's done, and I realize that's never going to happen. So uh, I'm just going to go through all this kind of stuff, and you can just meet me where I am. And most likely, the funny thing about all this is that. By the time you even see this video, I'll probably have an entirely different setup. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and start with the uh, let's start with, with with the live set because this is what I think people are most interested in. Um, as you can see, I've got three tracks of audio. This is this is these are audio uh, tracks inside of here. This is an instrument. Okay, so when I have this highlighted, as you can see, my push is ready to play whatever instrument is is highlighted now. What I've set up and a video that I've already made is how to get all your instruments in one instrument rack so that only one of them is live at a time. When I launch this scene right here, you can see this little EFX guy when I launch it with my foot, all of a sudden you'll see that the uh, by the light instrument is armed and now I can play it on the push and you can see the audio coming through there. So uh, if you're interested in learning more about that, I have a video uh, set up to that. The next clip over, you can see this is a, a sampler, so I can play drum sounds and stuff like that. Uh, and I can also uh, play the sampler that's sitting over here in this section. So the, you're familiar with songs that we have where there's different samples, like We Are Water or uh, a porcelain cover we did it at one point, Therian, stuff like that, monochrome. These uh, samples are actually played from this track um, down here at the bottom. And then I can scroll up and use my drum sampler to play drum sounds. Um, and again, all these are being triggered by different clips, dummy clips, inside of this track. So when we're at monochrome, right here, you can see this is the monochrome song. When this clip is launched, I can play it here, okay? The next track over, this is, we can go and look at the modular now. As you can see, the clock is playing, and so if you look right here, this is a, a MIDI to CV module, and it's getting the blinking light you can see right there. That's actually, it's receiving uh, MIDI notes down channel two to this MIDI to CV. Uh, all this does is, is I can play MIDI notes or I can launch a clock into here. And now all of a sudden I've got that signal molted to a thousand different places. I'm clocking the clouds delay time. I'm clocking my sequencer. As you can see, my sequencer's running. And if I stop Ableton, it stops the clock here. If I push play again on Ableton, it starts the clock here. So I've got a sync signal running between the modular and this world, all right? Um, and this has two different kind of worlds. One world is this, uh, this little quantizer, so I can say, okay, well, you know, uh, we call out, we're gonna go into, you know, C sharp. So I can just choose like C sharp, the notes that I wanna do like as a, as a triad here on my quantizer, okay? Boom, boom, boom. And then the sequencer will play just those available notes. On the other side of the modular, there's uh, another track here. And this track will play, if I have sequences to send into the modular, they'll play from here. So like the eyes have eyes. If I play this, it'll come down the MIDI channel. And as, as you can see in channel one here, there's channel two, this little guy, and then the channel one is this bigger guy. It's sending MIDI notes down to this guy, okay? So I have two different options. And I also have uh, something new, this little drum voice that I've been using, uh, and I can send it gates from my sequencer. But that's, the, that's pretty much the modular side of what's going on. Um, and so looking back at live, uh, the next track over, I have a guitar looper. And you can see, um, if you look uh, right here, this pedal that, that's right here, it pretty much, this pedal kind of takes care of the uh, navigating of the set, but it also takes care of the looper. So if I clear this out, um, I can click, if you can look at the looper and my, my foot, I can click record, and on the next downbeat, it'll start recording, and then I can click play. And this is how I loop my guitar live, okay? So it's getting a sync signal um, from live, and it waits for, for the next action. I can click on, I can add stuff, I can overdub, I can push play, and if I launch a scene, the next scene, it'll stop. Boink, and so it stops. Um, and so a lot of my set navigation is done here. You know, people ask, like, well, how does the band, you know, speed up and slow down? Like, how do you guys, are you always playing to a clock? And that's mostly true. We are almost always playing to a clock, but we have a lot of control over it. So on this pedal, I can, if you look at the BPM, I can increment down, see 151, 150, 
149, so on and so forth. I'm incrementing down that BPM with my foot, and I can increment it up with this guy. I can also navigate my set with these, so I'm moving down in the scenes, and I'm moving up in the scenes by hitting four and five on my pedal. So almost everything that I would ever need to do in terms of set navigation, looping, uh, changing the time, and then launching the scene is all done from my foot, which is really, really, really powerful because I'm an instrument player. I'm playing guitar, I'm playing the modular, I'm playing uh, you know, the push, uh, I'm working with mic, so on and so forth. So, so yeah, I mean, that's pretty much how that works. Now the next thing that I have is some, some of these uh, macro MIDI controls right here. Uh, these are mapped to different parameters on all my different instruments. So I just kind of memorize what these do, and I've mapped them all over live. Uh, this one, two, three, and four right here. Uh, these knobs are actually just macro effects. So this is, uh, this is uh, CC1 for various, various and assorted uh, modulation. This is my high pass filter. This is my filter resonance. This is my uh, delay, reverb. Uh, kind of like a chopper live cut kind of thing, a step flanger, and then a beat repeat. And this is how I kind of uh, blend songs in together. I, I, I tend to use this reverb a lot because it helps me kind of blend in and out of different parts. And then I have a slider right here so I can pull the computer out of the mix or push it back in. Um, and, you know, the, the push could do all this stuff if we wanted to, but the reason that I use this is because the tactile control, it's like it's right there on the top. I don't even have to look down here and I can count with my fingers. I know which slider I want to use. It's just really intuitive, it's really small, and it fits in my setup really well. So uh, more, more of the technical side of what's going on, you can see here I've got uh, the uh, Moti Ultralight MK4. This is, a, uh, this is the audio interface that I use. Um, and right next door to that, I have the Universal Audio Hardware Accelerator so I can use the, the UA um, effects on my voice. So looking back at the set, that's what, the reason I brought that up is if the next set over, there's the vocal effects, and these are all dummy clips that basically just tell a effect rack to change the clip that's playing. And those clips will launch these different, they'll launch these different effects. So depending upon where I'm at, if I launch this scene, or actually let's go to this scene. If I launch this scene, it's dry. But if I launch this next scene, you can watch this. It'll move, and it moved over to that verb area. Okay, delay and reverb. So you can see I've got delay selected there, the reverb selected there. Um, and so I have, yet again, this, the scene launch is, is doing everything. Every time I launch a scene, it's, con it's controlling so many different aspects. Moving all the way over to the end right here, there is a click track that I'm sending to the band. And as you can see, the, the off-colored ones are, are odd timing signatures. So this is 5-8 right here. And you can see I'm sending the band 5-8, 5-8, 5-8. then when we go to this scene, the next scene when I launch it, this is back to 4-4, back to four, four, as you can see right there. And so yet again, the, this, number, this little number one on this pedal is, is every single time I launch a scene, it changes everything about my setup. It could be my vocal effects, it could be what's happening with my guitar, I could be starting or stopping a loop, I could be moving up and down in the set, I could be changing the sequence that's going to the modular. It's all done with this one button, and then I can go in there and edit various aspects of it and kind of be the musician. Um, and so the guitar setup right now, uh, this is, I'm, I'm taking a whole new approach to my guitar. Um, I'm working on an analog front end, so I'm not exactly that stoked about this right now uh, because I'm, I'm, this is a 100% digital device. But I'm working on the, an analog compressor, an analog distortion. I'm actually getting into kind of like soldering and circuit design. So until those are done, this is kind of taking over the, the guitar end right now. What's cool about uh, Fractal stuff, though, is that you really can get in there and tweak your stuff. And if you've been to our shows on, on this tour, the Shapeshifter tour, you've heard a lot of the different, um, the different things that this thing's capable of. And I've had a lot of fun with the ring modulator, a lot of fun with the pitch. Um, it's, been, it's been super fun. So as you can see right here, there's a MIDI cable coming in here. And this is where we're going to get in the MIDI, the MIDI system and what's going on. So this MIDI cable is coming out of live. Live is, being, is sending this uh, MIDI sync signal, so all my delays and reverbs that I would want to use the looper and everything, it's all MIDI syncs. So um, when I'm changing tempo in here, it's changing the delay settings on there. Um, if you can come around to the back. So this is kind of a jumbled mess. It's hard, it's hard to really tell what's going on. But I have a little, this is my little MIDI brain. And what's coming out of here is going into my guitar. And you can see this is my, this is my USB hub. I'm not sure if you can see it there, but I have all kinds of USB connectivity going. The push, this controller, uh, this cable that goes into the computer, the USB that's going into to here, it's all coming from the computer. 
As you can see, this is the modular line going into the interface. Um, I've got uh, the Thunderbolt that's going back here. These are my connections that go to uh, the, the front of house board. Um, and over here you can see my two amps. I run in stereo right now, and these are kind of newer. Maybe you could get it from the front, I don't know. Um, but these are kind of newer. These are the Dr. Z uh, Maz 38s. Uh, no reverb model and they're pretty great I'm just I'm just getting used to them getting used to what they can do I'm gonna go with the four cable method if some of you more techie guys know what I'm talking about I'm basically gonna use the effects loop in here once I get this kind of thing figured out um, and then so finally uh, the last thing I want to show you is uh, a lot of people want to know well how do you and Mike do what you do uh, how do you how does Mike get the control well what's happening right now is I'm sending uh, you can get on this side um, the click track right here you can see this says click this is actually an output from live I'm sending that down everyone's uh, in-ear monitor okay and so that goes into their ears so Mike can hear tick tock 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 tick tock 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 he knows the timing of what's going on and then there's a feedback loop going though so he sends you come over here and look at his setup he's sending me MIDI down this cable okay and that MIDI is going into the input MIDI on my uh, audio interface, okay? And so he can play various things, like he can play my, uh, the drum rack that I have set up. So again, when I click on that number one and I, I launch a new scene, it could change the, 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 the kit that he's playing. And he would play it through this. So uh, that's, kind of, uh, that's kind of how we do that. Um, he's got, you know, you can see he's got a MIDI trigger down there. He's got trigger pads. And uh, he even has on the top here, he has transport controls for my Ableton set. He could stop the clock. He can mute various various tracks, and so this is you could kind of think of this as a remote controller for my Ableton set. Um, he has a lot of power over over what happens over there, and it's kind of nice because if my hands are you know I'm doing this or I'm doing something else, I can look over him. He can do stuff. He can call cues out. Uh, you know, in the future we want to expand this maybe to be working with more uh, different aspects. Like maybe he'd even have push, or maybe he'd have the ability to change the tempo from over here. Um, we haven't really got there yet, but you know. We're kind of forging weird territory at this point. So, um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it at this point. We're we're always building this system. We're always trying to figure out what the next thing to do is and and how to make things work better and how to really just take electronic music and and improvisation and really take it to the next level uh, in terms of control and just having having control over what happens. So yeah, I hope you. You got some use out of this, and um, if you want to ask me questions, I'm happy to answer them. Just ask them in the comments. If you got use out of this video, consider subscribing or donating to the Patreon page. The link is at the bottom. Thanks so much, guys.